So we're here with Tim Carbone at the Winter Wondergrass Festival. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, you know, can you imagine a better place to play a festival? Yeah, it's perfect weather. It's like 65 degrees, a light breeze, and uh, anybody that likes to ski has got plenty of snow. You can, can probably ski in their shorts and t-shirt if you want. Now, when you say anybody who likes to ski, that's not you? I don't ski. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm afraid for my wrists, because if I break them uh, as a fiddle player, uh, it's difficult to come back. Uh, you you kind of have to relearn stuff, and you can actually lose your career. And uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, as a fan of fiddle players, please don't. <laughs> um, I saw a couple of your other bandmates head up to ski today. Apparently, they're not as worried as you. Now there's a few of them up there skiing right now. Maybe we can get them in the background while this is going on. Lots of festivals. Uh, every once in a while, like not last year, but the year before, was it last year? I'm not sure. What, we tried it. We tried to do like a com like a little bit of a combo tour. We get hook up with the other uh, bands. I think last year we did we did you know, we did a we did a run with Yarner Mountain. The year before we did a run with uh, Bruce Hornsby. Uh, I got that backwards. This past year we worked with Warren Haynes. The year before we worked with Yarner Mountain. The year before that with Bruce Hornsby. Uh, nothing really. You know, we shook the trees and nothing fell out this year. Um, so we kind of just stretched it out with a lot of festivals. Um, there was, there's still more coming. We did a record called uh, Ashes and Dust that came out in November of uh, 2015. Um, it was awesome. And actually, I, I misspoke. He, that record actually came out in July of 2015, and we toured in August into September with him for that. But yeah, he wrote one song with Todd, and all of the other songs he had uh, he had already had written. And uh, I asked him for demos, and he was like, "No, nah, I just want to get you in the studio, and I'll play them for you in the control room, and then we'll just go from there." So everything was done that way. Every song he came out and played with an acoustic guitar, explained it. We took notes, you know, made charts, whatever. And uh, all, of my, all of my playing, literally, I'm actually real proud that it's never really happened to me before, but like every, all of my playing is single take. Nice! Yeah. So, is that a function of being a producer? You just knew you were done? You're like, that's it. Uh, no, I wasn't producing and I, 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 was, I would never presume to be the one to say I was done. I was ready to do whatever. But I was never asked to repeat anything. So, the only time that I ever repeat something is like, there's two songs that didn't make it on the record that John Skeen and I arranged strings for and I performed all the strings. Like doubled violins and violas and baritone violins and stuff like that. And those didn't make it on the record, but they're in the can. But those, are, I obviously, because I triple tracked each instrument, those are all going to be old ones. I, I interviewed Warren Haynes a, a little bit ago, and he said he had a, he had almost another whole album ready to go. Whole, just 13 more songs. And and that's you guys are all backing him on that too. Oh yeah, nice. So that's got to be just besides everything else, some fun bonus royalties. I'm not getting any royalties because I wasn't. I didn't write anything. I, I, I'll, if everything, I, I'll probably get something if, if they if they recoup, which means they get paid back all, all of the expenses they put out. Um, that would be a nice bonus. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, not counting on it. It's not, it's, you know, it's like not that important for me. Uh, the, the project itself was really cool, and uh, I got a lot of really good satisfaction out of you know, creating with, with Warren and doing, and doing that. So. It sounds like overall you you really play more for love than almost anything else. Well, I'm glad I actually make get to make a get to make a living at it. I mean, uh, no, I'm, uh, none of us are getting rich, but we're. But we're get we're you know we own houses we own cars everyone the bunch, a bunch of the people in the band have kids you know we're we're basically a middle you know we're, we live a middle class life which is but but except that I get to do something that I really really love to do so yeah your office is a little bit more enjoyable than a lot of people's offices. My latest side project is uh, I'm working with a, a little independent record label out of Greensboro, North Carolina called Low High Records. And uh, it's uh, Jim Brooks and uh, is our uh, on 
entrepreneur, and uh, Todd Snyder, singer-songwriter from Nashville, myself, and uh, Chad Staley from Hardworking Americans. And uh, yeah, we're uh, we have three artists coming out this year. Uh, Town Mountain uh, is, is first up, and uh, Rory Carroll is going to be later on in the summer, probably in August, and then later on, probably just before Christmas, we'll have the new uh, Great American Taxi record. And uh, it's uh, it, I'm, I'm super psyched to, to work with them. Uh, my role is kind of as a &R staff producer um, and you know general advisor, and uh, we're all in the loop together, and we're talking everything through. And it's really exciting. I'm digging it. Anymore. Well, you know, it's it's an insane thing to, to be honest with you. It's not. Uh, I, I don't know that I would actually recommend it. Um, but uh, but we're, we we believe in the artists that we have coming out this year, and so we're uh, and we have uh, we have a certain amount of. Uh, uh, resources, just enough for, uh, for this year, and then we have we'll have more in the next year. So we're kind of we're meeting it out, so that we can continue it uh, on without you know spending the farm. And essentially, uh, our our contracts are a little bit different for each artist, and uh, but most of the time, what we're doing is just helping the bands, uh, the artists, to uh, promote the record and get out on the road and um, and get the word out and you know press the records for them and, and help them you know that way and others we we actually put have put up the money for the recording itself and that may happen again and so the, that the, the kind of the beauty of this is that every every artist every band that we put out is someone that we're all eat that either one or all of the, the principal members of, uh, you know uh, of the organization believe passionately in and uh, so it's not it's it's somewhat more than just a business it's not a business it's it's more of a it's more of a labor of love so to speak i would i would figure these with with the way the world's working right now starting a label would have to be a labor of love yeah i mean it's it's an exciting thing because it's what we do you know uh, but i don't i don't know the prediction there's no way to predict the, the, the outcome. So you just kind of get in there and believe in it and work hard and, um, you know, and do, do, do the best you can. And, uh, and usually the, you know, good triumphs. <laughs> It, it varies on on the artists a little bit. Uh, some, some some artists and bands need more than others. Like sometimes I'll do uh, song doctoring and arrangement work. And most of the times, the, my general philosophy is um, to create a good scene, facilitate the record to be made, because I, uh, you know. Artists have enough to do just trying to, you know, if they're under, you're under a microscope when you're in a studio. So, you know, my, my thing is to keep a, you know, keep, a, keep an even keel, take care of the details, book the studio, watch the budget, make sure everything sounds good, know when to say stop or no, do it again, that kind of stuff. You know, you just touched on one of my favorite moments or favorite questions. How do you know when to stop? How do you know when it's done? Well, <laughs> that's kind of my job. You know, because like what, usually what it is is you find out that the, you, you, more that you know the, the, the like you know when you've gone one take too far. <laughs> We had a, uh, we had a, it was kind of a similar thing. We had a friend who had started a little label to help us out. Uh, the first record was on, uh, on, uh, you know, was was not self-released, but it was kind of self-released, and uh, we were helped with the, with the uh, publicity and a little bit of the pressing, you know, for the pressing of the record, and uh, really helped us get out. Uh, initially, I don't, I don't know that we would have been able to do it without it. So it's kind of the same thing, but with per perhaps just a little bit more resources behind us for low high. So it's got to be kind of rewarding in a way for you to come full circle and now 
try and help some folks as they're starting now. Absolutely. Uh, I produced the, the Great American Taxi record I produced, so um, probably one of my roles is going to be uh, finding bands, producing them, and bringing them to the label. Um, I've been producing records since 1986. Uh, the, the Great American Taxi record was my 55th record that I produced, so uh, I love that. You know, I love to do that, and so I, this is just this is another way for me to, uh, to try to funnel the, the, the talent that I found and worked with and nurtured and mentored, so to speak, uh, and, you know, to kind of get them born and let them, you know, let them fly. side project band that I've had for uh, going on seven years now, uh, a little more, eight years, called The Contribution, uh, with uh, Keith Mosley from the String Cheese Incident, and uh, Jeff Milner and Phil Ferlino from uh, the Bay Area band New Monsoon, uh, myself, and uh, we've had kind of a little bit of a round robin of drummers. We had uh, Jason Han was our original drummer for String Cheese, then we had uh, Matt Butler for, uh, and he's on, uh, we have a new record that's coming out, uh, and there'll be more, I mean, we'll, if you if you want, you can go to, you can, you can like us on Facebook and you'll know everything you want to know because we're not going to release it in a traditional way. We're going to give all the music away to various uh, non-profit organizations. We're going to give and all of the profits from the sale of the, of the songs are going to go to all various different non-profits. We haven't figured out uh, the, the actual mechanics of that yet, um, but we're super psyched with the music. And the last two songs we had... Uh, we had uh, Dwayne Trucks playing drums on it from Widespread Panic, and he killed it. And uh, so we're going to be doing shows. Uh, we're going to be doing a number of shows on the West Coast coming up, probably in September, October, when we, when we release the record. And uh, so yeah, that's my my latest like awesome news. For Live for Live Music, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your busy day to chat with us and enjoy this beautiful weekend. Well, my pleasure, and you enjoy it too.